My name is Katie. I got a BC in general genetics in undergrad, and I am still an excellent genetic counselor in spite of it. Welcome to Genetic Counseling Awareness Channel with Katie Lee. All the best resources you'll ever need at Genetic Counseling Awareness Channel. Hi guys, my name is Katie Lee, CGC, and welcome back to my channel. Today is Wannabe Wednesdays, and on Wannabe Wednesdays, I talk about topics of interest for those of you who are thinking about genetic counseling school, learning more about genetic counseling as a profession, and for those of you who are currently applying. So today, I'm going to be discussing a hot topic, which is undergrad GPA. Does it matter? How much does it matter? What I'm hoping to do today is go over the importance of the undergrad GPA when you're applying to genetic counseling school, talk about ways that you can compensate for bad or mediocre grades, and then finally, I'm gonna share my undergrad transcript. My heart was pounding when I pulled it up. I felt like I was back in school waiting for my final exam grades to post. I'm gonna share my undergrad transcript as well as my grad school transcript with you all today. So first let's talk about grades and what emphasis is put on grades when you're applying, what type of GPA is average when you're applying to genetic counseling graduate school. So most grad programs require a, a minimum of a 3.0 GPA in undergrad to apply. Some have a slightly higher GPA minimum, like I think I've seen 3.2, and some have no minimum. The average GPA of applicants is about 3.5. So quite a bit higher than that minimum. Now, I will tell you, I had a 3.277 in undergrad, um, as well as, like I said, a BC in general genetics and mediocre grades, like I think a B in chemistry, um, a B in statistics, and I'll show you later. So not that great of grades in my prerequisites. Now, when I say not that great, I mean not that great for how I think I should have done. I was... I was not that mature when I was 18 to 22 years old going through undergrad. And I had a lot of priorities that came before school, like a lot. So I didn't do my best in school and I did not prioritize school until my last couple of semesters when I realized I wanted to apply to graduate school and how important my GPA was as part of my application and that I needed to try and improve it as much as possible. And even with that, once I was trying my best, I still am not a 4.0 student. So I wanna provide some encouragement. You do not need to be a 4.0 student to get into genetic counseling grad school. You do not need to be a 3.5 student to get into genetic counseling graduate school. Even though it is highly competitive, there are so many pieces of your application that can make up for poor or mediocre grades. And on the flip side of that, there are students with 4.0s 4.0s, amazing, book smart students who do not get into genetic counseling graduate school. It is not the only piece of your application. If you have been thinking about applying to genetic counseling grad school or you're applying for admission in 2021 and you've been feeling remorse about your grades, try to let it go. You can put all of that energy into compensating for your bad grades. So let's talk about ways that you can do that. The easiest and I think the most obvious one is to just take another class in a science topic or in a related field and ace it. There are a lot of different classes out there, whether it's just an online undergraduate course um, or a specific course geared towards genetic counseling students that are readily available. And I can talk more about that in a different video. For me, what I did to compensate for my BC in general genetics, which let me tell you, I worked really hard to get that BC. It was an incredibly hard class and a really challenging professor. And to be honest, all I walked away with was understanding Bayes' theorem perfectly. My professor was obsessed. He had a license plate that said Bayes on it. I crammed so many size four font equations and definitions terms onto my little like four by six index card for those exams and it did not do squat. I still definitely got like a C or a D in some of my tests in that class. So what I did to make up for it is I took a few advanced genetics courses, a few higher level courses, and I earned an A, B in one and an A in the other. So I think that made up for my BC in general genetics. I still was really worried about it because I was applying to genetic counseling school, um, but 
I got interviews at five of the six schools I applied to. I don't think most of those schools minded my BC in general genetics since I was able to achieve a good grade in the advanced genetics courses. Okay, tip number two to compensate for your mediocre grades is to make up for it with relevant experience. Put hard work into your extracurriculars. Look for extracurriculars that are unique, um, not just a genetic counseling assistant job or those really obvious roles that a lot of applicants also have, but think about unique roles that tie your passions or your hobbies somehow to counseling or genetics or genetic counseling. Think about taking on a passion project that you can work on individually. Um, and it could be something that's published to the internet or as a patient resource that you create and you can show off and share during your interviews or as part of your application process. For me, I think my experience volunteering in the locked psychiatric ward at UW Hospital and the passion I had for working with people with psychiatric diagnoses really showed through. And then to follow up on that, my first job out of undergrad for the year before genetic counseling school started was as a crisis support counselor. So I think those experiences, I spent a lot of time on them. I was really passionate about them and it gave me so much to pull from when I was writing my personal statement and when I was talking to uh, interviewers. The third way that you can compensate for your GPA is to crush the GRE and the personal statement. Now I know GREs are not required at every school anymore. And I think, you know, that makes sense. It's not, it's not a great measure of your ability to become a genetic counselor, of course, but it is one other way to show your book smarts off. And it, I found it was very easy for me to focus because I knew I needed to compensate for my GPA, that I needed to study really hard for this one test and do well. So that's one way to compensate. And another is on the personal statement. Start early, force yourself, even if it's uncomfortable for you, to have, um, to have multiple people review that personal statement and to give them plenty of time and request constructive criticism on how to make it better. So those are my three tips for how to compensate for your bad grades. Another thing I'd say to be ready to do is to be ready to talk about it. If an interviewer, um, like the program director, asks you about your bad grade in a specific course, which happened to me about my BC in general genetics, be ready to address it. And there are even some programs where you can submit a short statement, like a paragraph, to explain why you had a poor GPA or a poor grade in a specific class. I would recommend only considering that if you have a very legitimate reason. I would have never used that for myself because my reason was immaturity, bad priorities. That was it. What I said when the interviewer asked me about my poor grade in general genetics, I said it was a very challenging class and I did not have my priorities straight that semester. And once I knew I wanted to I was serious about genetic counseling school. I reprioritized and I focused more on my studies and took the two advanced genetics courses to show that I can master genetic mater genetics material. So I think something like that is sufficient and not getting into details like I was going to the bars too much or something like that. Now, last but not least, let's take a look at my transcripts. Okay, so here it is, guys, my official transcript, or I guess my unofficial transcript from UW-Madison. Um, I'll just tell you, I highlighted all of the like science and psychology courses just so you could see them quickly. But essentially, what you'll notice is the courses I did well in um, were oftentimes not the science courses. Um, so let's see, B's in some neuroscience courses, a BC in Chem 103, some BC's, B's and A's in some psychology coursework. Bs in Calc, um, B in Chem 104, B in Statistics, and BC in General Genetics, some A's for some specific psychology courses. I mean, those were definitely much easier for me than like chemistry and organic chemistry. And then this was my last semester where I was like, Katie, you have to get it together. You need A's and AB's to pull up that GPA. So I took 18 credits and did well in all of those courses which brings me to this grand total of 3.277. All right, and then here is my graduate school transcript. And really all I wanted to show you is look at all of these A's. If you put your mind to work 
you can get a higher GPA. So I had a 3.742 in grad school when I was focused and motivated. Oh, and one other thing I wanted to mention, if you're done sending in all of your applications and all the supporting documents to your grad schools, congratulations. It is such a huge task and I hope you have a plan for how to reward yourself with something. And if you're still chugging away at a few of those applications that have a later due date, keep up the great work. You're almost there. You can do it. It's worth it. Just get it done. Thanks for tuning in for Wannabe Wednesdays. Please like this video and subscribe. And if you have any topics you'd like to hear about, let me know below. Bye guys.